All right, good morning, people of YouTube. So this time we're back with another video. This time we are going to be talking about Imperial Dramon and BT-16. So it's that time again where the next format is rapidly approaching, um, and we are going to be looking at some of the best decks in that format first. Um, starting with this one, this is looking like it's going to be like the second best deck in the format right behind the Magna Variants. Um, and trust me, we will be covering Magnamon on this channel as well. I just have a lot of different lists for that, because there's a lot of different ways that you can build it. Uh, but Imperial German is pretty streamlined. This is a really good deck with a lot of solid matchups into the format. Um, and it just has a lot of things going for it. It's really aggressive, it's really sticky, it has a lot of really cool stun plays. You basically have a Floodgate on a level 6 that can counter Blast Evolve. Um, like, counter their Blast Evolve, which is really nuts. Um, and because of timing, you can even tuck their Blast to Evo before their Windage Evolving Effect triggers. So, uh, this deck has a lot of really cool things going for it. So, let's go ahead and get into some of the new support. Uh, starting with this Pyildramon, which I think is going to be the face card that a lot of people are going to recognize for this deck. Uh, so it's, uh, DNA with when digivolving you suspend all of your opponent's digimon with as many or fewer sources then if dna all of your opponent's digimon can't unsuspend uh when attacking once per turn you suspend one of your opponents unsuspended and if this effect didn't suspend then this card unsuspends so that's a lot of text um this card can essentially attack twice if your opponent has nothing to suspend same as the old pyil german um and when digivolving, you're going to stun a bunch of things, strip a bunch of sources. Or, this one doesn't strip the sources, but with the Davis Ken, you will. Um, and then, you have all these cool effects, right? And then, as an inheritable effect, and on this card's face, it has partition. So, if your opponent tries to remove your stack with any sort of effect, then you get your level 4s back, and you can go into another Pyildramon. It's a really strong concept, and it's something that makes this deck a lot better. This card is absolutely fantastic, and having a lot of Pyildramons that can swing multiple times means that whenever you are DNA Digivolving, you're threatening a lot of damage. So, this is a really good card and a very welcome addition to the deck. So, the other... There are four main cards that this deck received in this set. Um, we're going to be looking at Davis Ken next, because I think this card is really stupid. Um, at the start of your main phase, you get to play a V-Mon or a Wormmon from your hand at no cost. Um, its on-play effect is not negated, so if you play any of the cards from BT-12, you will get a search. And then it says, at the end of the... At the next time your opponent's turn ends, return that Digimon to your hand. This is never going to matter because you're going to DNA with that stack. Um, and when you DNA, it's a new Digimon, um, so the Digimon stays, and this downside uh, is effectively mitigated. Your turn, if you Digivolve into a green or blue Digimon, you can tap this Tamer, gain a memory, which is already nuts. If you have the XV and Sting from BT12, you're gaining one off of each of those and then one more off of this meaning that you can essentially DNA for, like, no memory at all. Uh, sometimes even go net positive. Uh, so you gain a memory, and then if you DNA, you trash three Digivolution sources on your opponent's Digimon, which is really good. It's a really fantastic card. Helps them helps you strip your sources down so that you can uh, trigger Fighter Mode's effect more easily. Um, but more importantly than that, it sets up your second body, it sets up your second stack, and it does a lot for you. Um... And then we do have the Dragon Mode and the Fighter Mode. The Fighter Mode is really dumb. Uh, on play and when Digivolving, you return a card with as many or fewer sources as this Digimon to the bottom of the deck, and at the end of attack, you can unsuspend this dude, which is already fantastic. It's a double attacker that just bottom decks something. Yes, please. With Blast, that's really fantastic. Um, and then at the it has an end of attack effect, uh to, you know, you unsuspend, then if you have Dragon Mode and its sources, you return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of the deck, which is really good. This is the effect that matters the least on the card, um, but being able to blast on top of your Pyildra, bottom deck something, and then force your opponent to remove this, um, sure, you'll trigger Overflow of minus four, but then Partition will activate, and you'll get your sources back, uh, and then your opponent has to spend that memory to deal with your sources, or you're just going to build another one of these. This deck is really cool, it has a lot of staying power, and this is one of the main gimmicks that the deck gets access to. Um, and something to help you abuse it is the new Dragon Mode. 
What's important on this card is the all turns effect. When an opponent's Digimon is played or Digivolved by an effect, if you have a Tamer, you can Digivolve this card into Dragon Mode without paying the cost. So, let me run a scenario for you. Your opponent is playing Fenrir Luga, is going to go up their full line and kill you. They promise because it's Fenrir. That's just what it does. So they promote their dude, they go, I'm gonna play the AG off of the Luga, gain the memory, whatever, activate the training to go into Lugar. You can then trigger Dragon Mode because they used an effect to Digivolve, go into the Dragon or go into the Fighter Mode immediately, bottom deck their stack, and then they get no value. Um, it's really dumb. Likewise, you could be attacking into Devas. They could go Blast Evolve. You could go cool. An effect let you Digivolve. Evolve into Fighter Mode. Because effects in the Digimon card game are first in, last out their effect will go into a state of delay, um, and your fighter mode will immediately go on top of the stack, bottom decking their, their ace card, and then they don't get their, their wind digivolving effect because their card isn't in play to resolve the effect. It's really dumb. This combo is really silly, and it's something that I didn't expect this deck to have going into this format when I was initially going through the cards in BT16. And this combo alone just elevates this deck a lot. Um, it's a really cool thing that the deck has going for it. And yeah, I really like this. So without further ado, I guess we'll go ahead and get into some of the cards that we are playing. Uh, we are playing the Demi Vmon Eggs that let us draw more cards. Um, I think this is important because you want to refill your hand just in case something happens to go into a second stack, um, or so that you see your pieces for your first stack, because this is a combo deck that is very reliant on seeing your pieces. Um, so I'm playing three, the one that lets you draw if you have a green dude, uh, which can trigger off of some of your rookies as well, which is really nice. Uh, and then two of the one that says if you have jamming, you get to draw a card, uh, which is really good with this XV Mon from EX1. It's good with all your Pyildramons because you're always going to have, uh, this jamming inheritable under... Um, and it's, it's just really nice. So for the rookies, the main ones that you have to play are the ones from BT12. This Vmon right here, and this Wormmon right here. They are your primary searchers. They search the best card that you want to open with, which is the Davis Ken. Um, and they also search the top three of your deck for basically any Digimon that you play, um, which is really fantastic. Um, but the main reason that you have to play these is the end of turn inheritable to DNA. Because a lot of times what will happen is you will go into a level 4 on top of one of these. And then hard play whatever level 4 you didn't have um, to end your turn, essentially. Then you will trigger this end of turn effect to DNA. Uh, your level 4s will gain you memory back. Your Davis Ken will gain you memory back. And that will keep it your turn, allowing you to go nuts. So these are very important. Um, adding to that, we have the Wormmon from the movie promo pack. This card is really good because it, again, has that end of turn DNA effect. But also, you have another on play to search more cards. It adds a green or blue dual color card, which is a lot of this deck. And it can also search your Ken. So you have 10 rookie searchers that search your best tamer. Um, and 10 rookie searchers that search most of your cards. The one rookie that we are playing that is not a searcher is going to be this new Vmon from BT15. I really like this card. Um, because we are playing the Demi Vmon, we can evolve for zero, um, which is, I if you if you had to evolve for one, you wouldn't play it, um, which is why I'm not playing the new BT15 Wormmon. Um, its inherited effect is fine. DP buffs are cool, especially in a format where Magna X can block. Um, but... It, its main effect is when one of your other Digimon is played or Digivolves, if it if that Digimon is green or is the free trait, you get to gain a memory. So a lot of times this card is just netting you memory, uh, making your DNA play even cheaper, even more efficient, um, and it's just an overall phenomenal card. So I'm playing 13 rookies with 14 level 4s, um, and there is a really good reason for that. So what you have to consider is that this is a DNA deck, which means that you need one of these greens and one of these blues in order to be able to do anything. 
Um, so therefore, you cannot treat them as the same ratio. You have to treat them as separate entities. So I am playing seven blue level fours and seven green level fours to make it so that I am getting into my Pyildramon. That, um, and you only need one rookie to DNA. Typically, you'll go, like I said, BT12 rookie or this promo Wormmon um, into either an XVmon or a Stingmon, and then hard play the other one for four. Um, or this one from the starter deck for three because it makes itself cheaper, which is really efficient. Um, and that's your main line. You're going, you're digivolving into a level four, and then you're hard slamming the other level four, trigger end of turn, go into Pyildra, start winning the game. Um, for that reason, I wanted to make sure I saw these pieces. If you are playing the standard 12 uh, level fours in this list, you will not see uh, your combo pieces enough in order to DNA consistently. Um, 14 is the number that you need to be playing. Uh, but I am playing four of the BT12 Stingmon and four of, or, and three of the BT12 XV. These are the ones that gain you a memory when you DNA. It's really nice. Uh, this one's Inheritable Jamming. This one's Inheritable Piercing. Really good for your line. Being able to stun everything uh, and then swing over with Jamming and Piercing is stupid. Um, and then I'm playing two copies of the uh, Starter Deck 9 Stingmon that makes itself cheaper to play. Uh, its Inheritable effect is not a once per turn, so you can draw a bunch of cards off of it, but it's just draw a card if you have a blue Digimon in play, which is really nice. Um, and then I'm playing, for my last green level 4, I'm just playing the one of the new Stingmon. Um, and that is because it is an on-play and when Digivolving suspend something, and an Inheritable effect of suspend something. Which can come up. It's not the most ideal, but I do want to test this card uh, before I just decide that it's bad. But this card ultimately could end up becoming uh, another copy of this Starter Deck 9 Stingmon. But the Retaliation is cool, so um, I wanted to try it. I think this card is pretty cool. Um, it does some neat things, and uh, yeah, it's a 4 play cost, so it's not bad. But the other blue level 4s that we are playing, I'm playing 3 copies of the EX1 XV Mon. Um, because this card is just really fantastic at pushing early tempo. This card, being able to swing with jamming and then being able to digivolve into the Pyildramon and then swing two more times with jamming is really good. Um, you know, three checks off of one play that you're gaining memory for doing is always a plus. Um, this card is just really, really good. I just didn't have room for four because I did want to try the new starter deck Magnemon in this list. So something that this de this card does for the deck is it allows you to respond out of security a little bit better, but also surprise your opponent by getting a level 4 out of nowhere whenever they thought they were pushing tempo. So like if you have a Vmon in play and they check this, not only are you getting this card into play, you're drawing off of the evolution, you're de-digivolving something, and then you're trashing a source and you're bouncing something else, that's a lot that happens. Um, this is a really good card. Um, and it's one of those cards that is so good that I feel like it is worth testing in this list, even though this card, realistically, for the sake of consistency, should be another XVmon. Um, I did want to try it. If you aren't finding success with this Magnemon, just drop it and then bump one of these XVmons up. I'm leaning towards the BT12 one because gaining the memory is really important. Um... But yeah, these are the level 4s that I'm playing. You want to be gaining memory, evolving into Pyildra, and that's really good for you. So for the level 5s, we are playing 3 of the old Pyildra and 4 of the new one. Uh, the new one's just really freaking good. Uh, and the old one does a lot of really good things. This is still a fantastic card. Um, both of them are double attack. This one bottom decks a 6k. This one stuns everything uh, and has partition, which is just really good. So... Having seven level fives that you can go into um, is really nice. And these cards are both blue and green, so they're very searchable off of effects like Davis, you know, your BT12 cards and all that. So for the level sixes, it's just going to be two of the dragon mode and four of the fighter mode. Uh, while this combo to go from dragon mode into fighter mode is very good and very broken, uh, you will only need to do it against certain decks. Um, other decks you just kind of just slap just by 
out aggressing them or bottom decking all their little dudes like against Nume you just play this Pyildramon and just start bottom decking their pieces and just start swinging and they have a bad time um but if you if you find yourself needing this like you'll have access to it because these pieces are so searchable but the fighter mode I feel like is more important for the deck so this is the one that I want to be playing four of this card has a lot of value even without Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode, just because if your opponent's trying to swing over your Pyil Dramon, you can blast into this and bottom deck them. Um, it's really cool. Um, it's, it's a really good boss monster, and it's one of the cards that really pushes this deck over the edge. Uh, for the Tamers, we are playing four copies of the new Davis Ken, because this is the best opener in the deck. What you want to do is you want to open any rookie and this card. That's it. Uh, play this Tamer evolve the rookie in the back you're good next turn you promote the rookie this card plays something else you get a search you evolve into uh your dude and that's all fine even if you don't open the rookie if you draw it the next turn hard play it for free off of this uh get the evo uh after the search and then the hard play the other level four you're all set up because this is going to gain you three memory uh one from this one from each of your level fours if you drew the right pieces and that's really, really good. Um, this is a really good tamer, and I feel like this is something that you need to see as early as possible, which is why I am playing four. Uh, the least number of this card you could get away with is three, and I think that's really stretching it. Um, and then we are playing two copies of the old Davis, because who would have thunk uh, searching up to two cards and being a memory setter is still really good. Uh, this card searches all of the deck, um, being able to search blue and green Digimon at the same time means you're not whiffing on important pieces, uh, which is why I'm not playing things like the training boost or the memory boost um, and just sticking to this Davis because it is that important to find your pieces, and you cannot bottom deck your Stingmons um, with this card where you can off of training. And every time I use training, I bottom deck Stingmon, and that feels really bad. Um, so yeah, these are my Tamers. Uh, this is the bare minimum that I'm willing to play, and that is because I wanted to make room for all of the important pieces in the deck. This is a this is a deck that really rewards you for bumping up the copies of the cards that you play that are just innately combo pieces. That being said, the options are the flex slots of the deck where they are not inherently combo pieces, uh, but they do help you get you to your goal. Uh, starting off with Megadeth, I'm playing two. This is just some of the best removal that we've ever had in the Digimon card game. If you are in a position where putting it back into their hand is not good, maybe you consider dropping one of these for like a Gigadeth, um, because that card is still fantastic. You're gaining enough memory off of this deck that the nine play cost isn't really going to affect you that much. Um, and bottom decking their whole board could be better. Um, but Megadeth is still really good. Bouncing something for five and suspending something is really solid especially when you're gaining so much memory that you can oftentimes just bounce their mega and choke them to one with this card and that's just really fantastic um i'm playing one copy of hammer spark this is kind of like a flex slot in the deck but there are a lot of times that like in combo decks you just want one more memory i didn't want this card to clump uh, like, I didn't want to see multiple copies of this card in my hand uh, instead of other pieces, so I elected to only play one for the clutch instances where it does come up. Uh, but if you don't want to play this card, just you, this is an easy cut. This is the most cuttable card in the list. Um, but try it out. I really like it. Uh, the last card to go over is another new card. Um, it is the Invincible Dragon Insect Fusion. Uh, so this card, with a stupid-ass name and an even stupider uh, art, has a really good effect. Uh, the security effect lets you play a Vmon or Wormon from Hand or Trash, then you put this card in your hand. That's already really good. You can get a bunch of searches off of this. Um, and then, you, f for activating this card, you just get to play an X Vmon or a Stingmon from your hand. Then, two of your dudes can force a DNA. So even if you don't have the rookie under your stack, this card can let you DNA, uh, even if your turn would pass. Um, and then, you know, you're going to gain the memory from your BT12 pieces, which is really nice. Um, but after they DNA, until the end of your opponent's turn, the Digimon, th this effect forced to DNA, can't be deleted in battle and gains blocker. So you get an unkillable blocker out of the exchange, which is, which is kind of cool. 
Um, but the main reason that you're playing this card is because your Stingmons and XVmons at minimum cost four memory. Uh, this card will be able to let you play one for three, uh, letting you extend even further in your turns. This is a really cool card, um, and it's something that is definitely worth testing. I could see myself bumping this card up to two in the future if it tests well, um, but it's a card that I don't see a lot of people talking about, and I think is actually pretty good, especially having tested with V-Laser. I think V-Laser is a phenomenal card in Imperial, and this is just a better V-Laser, so um, try it out. Um, I think this this card could see mixed results. Uh, some players will really like it, some players really really won't. Uh, let me know in the comments which camp you fall into. But yeah, that's it for the deck profile. This is a really cool deck with a lot going for it. Um, and yeah, hope you guys try it out. This is, if you're looking to get uh, your invite to Nats, this is something that uh, could very easily do it, which is something that we haven't been able to say about Imperial Jamon in a very long time. So hope you guys like the deck and we will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.